Todd, do you want me to uh, make you a presenter so you can go through the questionnaire or uh, the survey? Or do you just want me to run that through? Yeah, why don't you just run it and then I can walk through it because all we have to do is, is step through. And I'm bringing the email up okay. Uh, okay. that has the changes in it. Okay. Are we ready to start or should I wait? Uh, let's wait a little bit. Uh, yeah, we're just waiting we'll, for Jeff. We just had the uh, exact committee call finished half an hour ago, and uh, I guess Jeff is uh, still haven't get back to the office yet. Okay. Hello. Hey, this is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Okay. okay. So I'm in a car because I have to switch my daughter to her afternoon camp. So uh, I may not be able to see slides. Oh, That's okay. Fine. That's fine. Okay. Then we can start now. No. So on the agenda, we have updates and action items from last week or two. And then uh, Todd wants to discuss uh, and go over the usability survey. Um, that we want to have um, um, sent along as part of phase one on datamide version one. And then we also thought that we could have a quick uh, discussion of the clinical trials mapping, the current one, so that we uh, can decide whether we, how we will um, display the subset of clinical trials um, that have the data set associated with them. And if time permits, we can have a, a quick update from all the team members. So the action items, um, the first four, I guess, are, are probably uh, not something that we want to discuss. It's just there because uh, we, uh, it's still pending. But um, the fifth one, which is the license of public release of biochemistry materials and the code, which was discussed briefly at the EC today is that it's probably just going to be a, a BSG3 um, license that has a non-commercial rider on top of it. Well, I mean, you know, I think, I mean, I, I think for UG Health, so for the for the, uh, the, the the UI code, that would be, I think, the open source license that UG Health would uh, default to. Yeah, you've done the development of UI, right? Yeah, we, we, we should look at our language, what's the, the open source license we said in the proposal. In the, okay, I think, I think we said we, Apache too, though. We did, okay. It doesn't really matter for our tech transfer. If we insist that we'll make it open source with certain license, they should be okay with it. Yeah, just remember that open source does not always mean open source. So like UCSD, uh, uh, recognizes open source as non-commercial open source. So, uh, just in a, in a proposal, then they default. I mean, their interpretation is that it's non-commercial. Yeah, we can take a look at the language in the proposal. That's all we need to look at. It. Okay. So, uh, sorry, I just forgot. Um, in the room here, let me just go through the, all the people who are at the call. Uh, in the room here, I have Wa, Divakar, Reeling, Saeed, Shaoling. And on the call, I have Dave, Huni, Mariana, Nansu, Ron, Todd, Jeff. Did I miss anybody? This is Ian. I'm just joining online. Okay. So, Anu, uh, one, one update. I mean, in the four, first four items, there was that the work that we're working on to then bring the, 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 the version two metadata data sets together with the uh, developments on your side um, mm -hmm. in about, I think, I think we said two, two, two or three weeks. Um, Barack, what Barack was supposed to get back yesterday from his vacation, but he's currently stuck in Turkey. So um, he's trying to get out through Europe. Um, so just wanted to give you 
a status update on the core developer who's uh, who's stuck in the kerfuffle over there. Yeah, Aiden is at thirty-two. Yeah, um, I and just told heard. me something happened. Not good. Yeah, the U.S. isn't allowing any direct flights from Turkey, I guess, so they have to reroute through Europe or something. Oh. Um, and we, Jeff, uh, do you have any updates about the video? Uh, yeah, still finalizing the voiceover. That was I ran into other issues last week, so that fell behind. So that's I'll move that to the top of the list. So we had a brief discussion about the technical manuscript, and I guess the current thought is that we are not at least immediately going to work on this. The manuscript. The manuscript, and so yeah, we we just talked it right. Ian yeah. suggests we refer to some technical document documentation on the, already on the on the web and the GitHub, and uh, we focus on trying to move the push the the general paper out first. So uh, there was also a, a brief discussion last week. Um, where we talked about data met release in scientific journals, but there wasn't enough time uh, to talk about it on the EC um, this week. So this is a discussion item that needs to come up on the EC later. Uh, Divakar will do a presentation of user activity tracking system that he's working with on the 2nd of August. Also, we ha I've started scheduling pilot project presentations at the CDT meetings. And so, uh, Go Chen and Harold will be presenting their pilot project, which is already completed, on the 9th of August. And then we probably will have a discussion of how we will integrate their pilot project into the into data mat. And Ruling and Divakar will uh, work on recording the timestamps for queries and uh, the time taken for the results to be displayed to the user so we can determine the response time on data mat. Uh, so uh, for the usability survey, Todd just wants to talk about and get feedback from the CDT. Uh, so Todd, there you go. Sure. So. There's, we went through this yesterday, and there's a number of changes. Right now, the person, uh, Nina, who did this is uh, actually in Iran. So um, we're going to try to get in touch with her. She just left and see if she can update it. Otherwise, we'll update it. Uh, so the updates aren't in there, but I'll talk about them as we go through. And uh, I know not all of you can see the screen, so what I'll go ahead and do is read these. There's not very many. Um, the main point of showing this is to get feedback You know, in terms of I guess both the, the current questions, but, but primarily, are there any areas or domains of interest that we're missing in here? Um, the way this was done was we looked at other surveys that we've used, uh, other usability surveys, and then I also sort of sat down and we brainstormed um, the different aspects of data med that we might want to assess and get user feedback on. Um, and this will go out to those individuals who we invited to use it, and then we may also launch it to uh, you know, individuals who have given us feedback, and it, it just really depends. This is, again, more formative than summative. The summative will be a more lab-based controlled study. So um, this doesn't have to be particularly formal, uh, but it should give us information to help us revise data med. So um, the first question here is how often do you visit the Data Med website? Right now we have never daily, weekly, monthly. We're going to add occasionally to that. Um, go ahead to the, and just feel free to break in if you've got comments or questions. Go ahead to the next question. I mean, with, this, with the last question, I mean, should it be how many times have you visited or I guess it's not, I mean, sort of, yeah, and we could ask, we could ask that month, right, right. We could ask that uh, in the past tense. It's probably I think that I, I think some of that we need to revise these because I think a lot of them are um, 
Well, some are patched in. Some make sense as you see them. You know, like we said, uh, there's a question, kind of the number one usability question is, uh, would you recommend this to a friend? And that's sort of present tense. But, uh, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, can you, so, yeah, let, yeah. We'll, we'll have to look at the tense of these. So yeah, just just for the visiting, because I mean, since it hasn't been up, you know, if, if it had been if it's been up for a year publicly, you know, then something like that might be might be valid for you know the visit question. But mm-hmm. since it isn't, I mean, you know, if, if they just found out about it, then they would be monthly, I guess, or you know. So I, yeah, that. I I would echo that. I mean, I. I'm not sure of the value of this question to a system at the stage that Datamed is at. Well, so some of the individuals that we, um, and, and we can look at what different ways of wording this, but some of the individuals that we invited may have logged in once, whereas others may have actually done something with it. So if the idea is to try to get at some level of gauging their activity. Well, you know what you might, what you might have. What you might have, have, what you might have taught is, is a, a fifth uh, circle there, uh, and just identifying somebody as a first-time user. Right. Yeah, I mean, or you could just categorize, like, you know, how many times have you visited the BioCaddy site? You know, and give it a range of numbers, or, I mean... Yeah, that's my being small. It's, it's more phrasing the question along yeah. those lines in terms of, you know, how... How much assessment have you done? The the other question is, as far as gathering this information, is how much of this information, how often have people visited it, being gathered through logs? And how is information go- gathered through a survey like this going to... Uh, I would have thought logs are going to be a much better measure of this. Right, but they're not going to tell us the, the, we can't correlate those to the to whoever's answering the survey. Again, this was a exempt from review, so we're not taking names here. Okay. So, okay, so we'll work on that. There, I know there's some fairly standard alternatives for this sort of thing, we'll look for one that that seems more appropriate. But that was something that came. This we, we talked about this as well yesterday, and realized there were some issues with it. Okay, next question. So, Todd, to pace ourselves, how many questions do we have to get through? Thank you. I think there's around 20 here, but a lot of them are. I mean, a lot of them are standard things that we use. Right. Um, I just want to know the number so we can bear that in mind as we make. Comments. Right. Right. Thank um, you. And then, the next one is which features of the site did you use? And again, we're just moving it to basic search, advanced search, and submitting a new data repository, which I, I doubt that anyone's done yet. But uh, you know, that that's just to get some idea of what they did. Um, and then it goes into these questions where there's a tag and a, and a Likert scale. So um, the first is I can effectively and quickly find data sets of interest. And again, all these are strongly agree to strongly disagree. Uh, the facets helped me narrow and explore search results. Uh, the retrieve results were easy to so understand. Does somebody know what you mean by facets? Well, if they don't, they can say neither agree nor disagree. Um, and, and that is an issue, I think, with some of these. You know, they're not called facets, even though we know they're facets and they appear everywhere. Um, we might, uh, and I thought about this, we might want to put a little image there to show them, you know, what a facet is. I think that would be useful. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, could, I mean, is it, I mean, is filter a better, I, I don't know if there's a better term. Uh, I think a diagram is, do you use this thing <laughs> to help <laughs> right. them explore search results? Right, and then we have the retrieved results were easy to understand. Um, go ahead to the next. A data met has all the functionality I expect of a data set search tool. And many of these are just rephrased versions of a standard usability assessment tool. And we just customize them for data med. 
Um, next, the data meds layout and navigation is intuitive. Data meds advanced search function is easy to understand and used. Uh, I would recommend data med to my colleagues, uh, which we're going to move to the end of this, uh, end of a set of questions. Uh, data med has advantages over other data set search sites. Uh, I plan to use data med in the future to find data sets. And we're, we're going to reorganize these kind of based on um, what they're assessing right now. It's kind of in brainstorm order when Nina put it in just before she left. Um, okay, more questions. Data meds, data set metadata is sufficient for searching for and sorting through, sorting through data sets. And there, it's unclear that they'll all understand what the metadata means. I would think most people using this would, but we're open to suggestions on how to deal with that issue. Um, we spent a lot of time on metadata, and it, so it seems important to at least assess um, a, a person's feeling about whether the metadata is sufficient or not. So any any input there would be appreciated. Um, next next question: Data Met has all the repositories I need for my work, and then Data Met has all the data types I need for my work. Um, and then we get, and I'll, I'll make some more comments along these lines after we finish this. So uh, then we have list the three most negative aspects, list the three most positive aspects. And this is again a standard thing for a for kind of usability survey that I usually do. And then go to the next. How about a box for uh, suggested enhancements slash upgrades? Yeah, so um, then anything else you'd like to share, what additional information or features. And then we get into demographics at the end, um, so in terms of age and um, what best describes you. And what we want to add here... So, so for the age, of, age uh, let, let me go back. You start at age 25. The level of the undergraduates or graduate students who uh, are using this who are less than 25. Right. Yeah, so, and that's just a that was just an oversight at entry. So yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll do that. 18, 18 to twenty-four. Right. Um, and then the other thing we want to add here is some idea of what domain a person works in, because I suspect that the questions, some of the answers to some of the questions will vary. You know, like for the kind of work that I do, I think Dryad is the only real repository that's useful to me right now. Uh, whereas Dryad may be mostly useless to a you know, vast majority of people using data met. So Todd, um, when you say domain, what does that, you saying you need to add one for that? Because I don't see Yeah, kind of the like discipline, discipline, you know, yeah, the discipline that they're working in, what kinds okay. of, not just, you know, are they clinician, are they researcher, but yeah, yeah. what kinds of work are they doing? Do you have what a list for that? Time? Do you have a list for that at the moment? You know, the only list that I have right now is what in our, let's see, graduate competencies in AMIA, we listed a number of the health domains. And I think it came from Ted Shortlist's definition originally, kind of of all the different health domains. That's a very broad list, but at least it gets at the different levels, you know, from basic, uh, you know, biology uh, all the way up to uh, population health. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, that could be a list with an enormous number of categories in it, potentially. Um, but uh, yeah, I think our the list that Amia has is uh, it, there's only six or seven categories, and that I don't I don't see that we right. can I've got do or need more than that. that. I've got a suspicion though that Amia will be heavily slanted to the healthcare professions, and will sort of bundle everything that we basic scientists think of into uh, like one bundle. Yeah, it's probably too, it's probably more bundled um, at the, the sort of lower biological level than uh, than those working there would probably want. So, so again, uh, if you know of a good uh, list that's not too long, uh, that would be that would be great. Yeah, I mean, do we want granularity at the level of let's say neuroscience, immunology, cancer, dot dot dot? Well, I know, that's a good question. So um, I was kind of thinking of the, you know, more along the lines of population health, clinical, 
molecular, uh, that sort of thing. So I'm trying to get at the levels of, uh, of, of biology and health. But again, we're open. I, I just think we need to assess that because that, you know, that clearly, depending on what you're working on, we've picked certain repositories that are going to help some more than they're going to help others. Okay. Just backing up, um, and this is another question on the line, that, that the terminology that we use, like facets. You had one there There was data types was used again. Um, and there was maybe something else on the same page, if you could back up there. Do people yeah. know what we mean by... I, I hate the term data types for what it's used for, to be honest with you. Um, types of data is a better term for it because data types generally mean something else. But if, if the world has moved on to knowing what data types means, and everybody agrees about it, then I'll I'll back off. But uh, no, I, I think you're you're right. Um, data types to me is a computer science term, um, and really types of data is a completely different meaning. Unfortunately, data med uses data type right now when we probably should be saying types of data. And um, we may even want to be clear of that. I mean, I think what we mean here is. Um, well, the other the other term for it is one is, is platforms, um, right? And we mean, for example, microarray data is a is a platform. Um, but we don't genomic have data, or even or even you know different sequencing platforms. That's probably getting too fine grained. Yeah, I think platform I mean, is too narrow. Data is a, and it, even something like imaging data is, is too gross of a term to use. Do, do we mean radiology? Do we mean pathology? Do we? Uh, and but that leads into the question of many of these questions. The response to to me begs a more specific question which is, all right, so it doesn't have the data types you need. What are the data types that you need? Right, and that's why the, these tags are important, because although we're not having write-ins there, they're going to cue the respondent to think about if something's missing or if they really like something, what it is, and then that's, that's why we provide the, the write-ins at the bottom, the three most negative, three most positive, and then anything else you want to tell us. So I think anything that really stands out as being good or bad uh, or missing, uh, the hope is that the questions will, will basically prompt them to, to remember to type something in down here. Now, the alternative would be to have a sort of text box for more information to each one, but that t tends to get a little bit unwieldy, I think. I mean, another alternative is to have some jump off into GitHub so that if you people want to provide more information about a specific thing uh, that's of importance to them, that they could enter it in GitHub. And that has the advantage of they would then be able to check back later on what happened to the issue that they've raised. Yeah, it might be a good idea at the end of the survey when we, I would, I would think doing it at the end when we thank them we can say, you know, if it, you can, you can provide feedback at any time through our GitHub site. Right, and I think at the end is a good place for that. Um, the only comment I might add to it is to say, you know, you know, more detailed feedback that will be that you can that will be tracked and you can check back on can be provided, you know, through GitHub. Right. Well, that, that could also include any specific uh, technical concerns or comments to the developers. Right, but I mean, it would also be a place if I wanted to say, you know, you're missing. Let, let look at that question. If I want to provide a more detailed response, Med has all the repositories I need. 
I would want to be more specific about that, and I'd want to give you a piece of my mind about what I think <laughs> data med should have. And then I want to know what happened to that, and I think that's um, what GitHub is, is good for. Right, I think at the end, again, there's a there's sort of a thank you message at the end that we can customize. So I think I would like to have them put it here because we can't tie the GitHub to the survey. But then, you know, afterwards we can say, you know, you're welcome to, to put the stuff on GitHub where it will be tracked and you can see how we're following up on it. Uh, and we encourage you to, uh, you know, to to put on GitHub any any major issues or suggestions that you also included in the survey. Um, so I think we can explain that at the end, and, and hopefully that will encourage more participation in the GitHub site. Well, there's quite a bit of information there now. Todd, do we have a, like a Word document about the whole survey? Maybe we should put up online so everyone can look at the comments. So uh, I asked Nina if she could export it uh -huh. and send it, and I haven't heard back from oh, her okay. yet. Yeah. Um, so if she can get into her account and export it. And so, so this is that way. I think for um, the question that currently on the screen, the the data mat uh, repositories and uh, and data types. So, um, is that possible? Uh, or, or maybe beneficial to use a different form of questions, like maybe checkbox or check boxes, uh, instead of like uh, like sort of opinion. And then I think the purpose is like say maybe the people can check the box that they are using, uh, they feel useful, and then there is a box, uh, an empty box that they can put in the repositories or data types, and not there. In that way that we kind of know what the people are using and what are the the things are are you know they, they're trying to requ request. Yeah, I mean I guess we could do we instead of just saying repositories, we could list the repositories. Well I we have quite a few repositories. And then that gets into the question of do we list repository types instead of repositories. Data types, I don't know. I think there's quite a few now that Dryad in there. It has all sorts of different types of data. So I can I see where you're going and that we might be able to do that. I'm just not I'm not sure that we I think we may have too many different kinds of things to actually list and put a checkbox. Yeah, yeah, we do want to keep it simple. We don't want to get people dragged into something that they get halfway through and say, oh, I'm not gonna bother with this. Right. So yeah, we're, we're already uh, pushing a bit too long, I think. Um, I, I don't want to make it too much longer than it already is. Yeah, the thing is currently there is uh, 23 repositories and 10 data types. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that may not be too bad. Um, Except asking the list of ones that aren't there. But again, they can, you know, they can. If there's some repository that they really need, there's they can always list it at the end. So it's a trade-off in terms of simplicity versus and time to take this versus uh, maybe getting a little more targeted information. You know, I, I just think I think they like uh, say, for example, that for for the both questions, um, if people answer somewhat agree, and that may may not be some information uh, easily actionable. Yeah, I guess it just kind of gives us an overall sense of. Satisfaction, which is you know, kind of what we're we're kind of going for that here. Um, I think this will help us then start looking at what we need to look at for the 
the summative study and what we need to do to maybe start improving things. So, you know, it, it's not, it's just one point of data. Uh, a lot of times on these surveys, the, the Likert scale questions kind of give you some ballpark assessment and then you, you take a look at the comments and, and use those to really make the improvements. So it certainly won't, it's not the be all and end all of uh, assessing data meds usability and user satisfaction. So any other comments on this? We've gone through everything, and I think we've done, um, I'm looking at my notes here from yesterday, but uh, I think I've covered everything that we, all the changes we recommended yesterday as well. I think there was one here on, you know, data med helps me get to the data set faster. So we, we haven't figured out how to word that, but kind of ease of access, um, you know, is it actually helping you get there? and find your data or get access to the data. And there's another question here about do we need additional questions on the metadata itself. We have one right now, which is, is the metadata sufficient? I think that's, um, th that's something that no, asks us to get thing. information about to other through other mechanisms. Uh, yeah, I would second Ian's point. Uh, if you're going to do follow-up one-on-one uh, -on -one assessments with users, right. then getting deeper into the metadata uh, is a thing to do at that point. And you might get some very, very specific uh, you know, uh, feedback. Right. I mean, I, yeah, I'm that, not that even sure of the value of the question at this level. So well, I can tell you that from my perspective, there's metadata that's, I think it's there, but maybe it's not in the facet. So to me, it looks like it was missing because I couldn't really use it. Uh, and some of that had to do with is it publicly accessible. Uh, other metadata that I would like to know is, is it a longitudinal data set? Um, you know, it, it, some of it, though, comes from my unique uses and needs. Okay, any more comments? We'll be getting working group nine. I hope we have enough to meet this Friday, which is also on user needs. Um, so we'll be looking at this and kind of looking at dimensions of, of usability and areas of usability for, uh, for data med. So it should be another round. And then um, at that point, we'll start looking at when we want to launch this. Uh, Nina's not back for a month. I would really prefer to launch it, though, before then. Yeah, we'll find someone else to yeah. maybe ready, ready to help us. Right. So if there are no more comments on that, um, we just wanted to talk briefly about the clinical trial um, mapping. I have. So this is the new mapping that we have. I guess, Jeff, you're not looking at the at the screen, right? No, no. So I just, really, and I briefly went over it, and I, I couldn't find the metadata field where it has uh, information about the data set. It should be in data set. I think, uh, 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 I got to remember, I think it's either data available or available and that's set to true. Um, I can send, I can send the, the Elasticsearch query that brings those back when I, when I get back to the office in about 20 minutes. Okay. So maybe uh, we can talk about this then next week. 
So, Anu, is, is this the particular issue when we're talking about clinical trial data? I know it, it's certainly one that's important to me um, because, I mean, the issue that had come up was that in a right. of clinical trials.gov, we've got swamped out because there are so many. But the fact that a clinical trial exists is, you know, is, is, uh, is, in, is not really what we're looking for. The, I thought we were moving in the question in the direction that data med would only be listing and returning in searches trials that actually have data. Now, um, is that our goal here? Right. So that would be a subset of what we have right now. And so the question is, how are we going to? pull that up and how are we going to display it and make it really clear to the user that it is a subset that has data associated with it? Well, to me, this isn't a question about what our mapping is. So, of course, if we're doing an ingest, we may need to do the mapping. But it's really, is there information in the metadata that is coming from clinicaltrials.gov that we can use to answer the question, yes, this is a date this is a trial that has a data set that's available and therefore should be yes. listed yes. in a search. So the mapping yes, and that's is turned into a flag. I mean I would throw away all the other stuff, quite honestly. What do we think it is? It's about ten percent, right, Jeff, that has data? Uh, well, I can query against the flag and see what the percentage is, but it's yes, yeah, it's, it's somewhere in that in that range. I am, I'm only talking about a ballpark range here, but I would junk the rest. <laughs> That's just me being ignorant, though, probably. But uh, you know. So what I understood from uh, Jeff is that. This information is available on the clinical trials metadata, right, Jeff? Yeah, there's a there's a a data availability flag that's 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 been added, and so that if you if you use that in your query, then you can limit it, or you could you know just pull the the, the records that have that flag set to true. <coughs> Yes, that, that has been modified at the moment just to incorporate uh, the two points that have been mentioned so far, which is to clarify what is a data type, and we will probably move away from the, the current flag uh, or tag, and, and then again uh, have a flag to, to check or to let people know whether the data set is available or not, or the actual data are available. And then again, we will also uh, qualify the type of data that is available. So this is where the, we will need to dig a bit more in some repositories to see uh, which types, uh, which dimensions are actually distributed freely. And this also connects to the, the condition of access that we will have to expose somehow. I mean, clinicaltrials.gov is not actually where the repository, where the data sets exist. Right? So right. we're going to have a special kind of data duplication. I mean, I can imagine you've got a situation where there would be a clinical trial that might have some genomic data in one repository, some imaging data in another, and some third type of data in, in a third. Um, but nevertheless, the clinical trial is a very uni very useful and unifying thing because it would pull what would otherwise be separate data sets together as a unified and connected thing. I know what I'm throwing out there is, is a, a challenge to work out how we handle that situation, but I think there's real value in it, the fact that you've got a connecting thing, which is the, the study, i.e. the trial. But that, you know, that's a, that's a, 
that shouldn't be a barrier in the way of simply identifying first and foremost clinical trials that have data sets. Another uh, issue that Jeff uh, brought to attention, which you probably um, want to talk about, is whether we want to redirect the original datamed.biocaddy.org website to the new ECSD site, because I think there is some confusion with some of the users going to the previous one. But we're still getting a lot of users go to the previous one. They yeah, on. right. So I can go back and show the... Yeah, if we do the redirect, it should probably be a permanent redirect. I forget what that is, if that's the 403 or whatever the code is that you tell it to redirect as, but it's... Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, we're that right there. Because um, well, on the Google and... Well, different uh, name for what you got. Because you could just set up a, I mean, on, on that machine, you could just potentially set up a separate um, virtual server config in Apache. You're using Apache in front of PHP. So, Jeff, can you repeat that again? Are you using Apache in front of PHP on your server? Yeah, we're using Apache. Yeah, so you could set up for the data med dot biocaddy.org you can set up a the 403 direct or wh whatever the one is that's the permanent redirect and then you could you know create a separate virtual configuration for you know the current dev site and just give it some other you know some other uh, domain name okay. you know that you have control of so okay. so this begs the question Sort of post 1.0 release, um, uh, and I'm not sure whether I should use the word production for it because it's a prototype. But we've got the public, the publicly released version, right, which is off a server at UTH now. Am I correct? Right. So that's a public release. The key question is UTSD. where is where, now we've got that, and that's where. Uh, the definitive prototype is. The production is at UCSD. Right, but where is the development instance and how do we manage these? What, how many instances do we have of BioCaddy going, of DataMed going for, forward and what are the purposes they used for? I mean, it's probably, I think... We just have one development site. Right? right, I mean, as new development continues, there's a group of people that need to look at the one that's under development. And that will still be publicly visible, yes? Say one of us at NIH needed to look at it. Will we be able to look at it at a URL? Well, which one you want to look at, the public, the, the production side, or the I'm imagining there. I'm imagining, while, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are two instances. One I'm going to call development, and the other one is the publicly, let's call it the stable release. Mm -hmm now, right? Is that correct? There are those two. Yeah. Okay. And will there still be a publicly available URL for the development instance? Uh, depends. Right now, that's the data matter of biocady.org. But now we're going to using this one. We're going to redirect to UCSD, so we're going to make up another domain name for the development side. But right. can we open up the development side or not? It's up to us. I Either way, would it's fine. It, I would suggest it needs to be open. Sure. I mean, just as mm -hmm. we were in a situation where the, the 0 0.5 and the 1.5, 1.0 were both available, if you knew the URLs. 
Okay, we, we can just, since we have this file case, or we can make up another subdomain name. Yeah, development or something like that. Development or dev. Or dev, to keep it short. Yeah, and we can. Yeah, we, need, we need a different domain name than the datamed.biocad, because that's yeah. sort of datamed yeah. sort of associated with the, with the open. So right now, for the, for the time. since datamed.biocad.org had a, you know, like just like we had it earlier, maybe we could still have a username and password. It would stay the same for the development version, at least. Who's, who's managing that data mail dot org? Uh, Claudio. Claudio. Yeah, maybe make another subdomain like a development. Okay, uh, make some like beta. Or something like that. So we, we Yeah, that's that. not a problem. Okay, thanks. So, uh, with reference to GitHub issues, um, for those that are associated with version 1, we have seven that are open and one closed. Uh, also, what Mina did was to go over all the GitHub issues and um, we, uh, she made a tag on the GitHub which talked about whether the issue was associated as or could be called a usability issue and she has tagged those. And once uh, we are going to start closing the loop and figuring out if uh, the usability issue has been addressed or not, and if it's been addressed, then we can start closing the issue. So we have right now 29 usability issues that are still open. So obviously there's a lot of overlap between that and what's associated with version 5 bugs and hacks. But this is how it breaks down with each tag. And um, what we have uh, with the ongoing work is we are still working on uh, getting the repository expanded. But as I mentioned last week, uh, Reeling and Shaoling are primarily working on the refactoring of the code. So once that's done is when it's going to get updated with the um, updated repository that or re indexed repository that we have received from Jeff's team. And uh, that will probably be in another um, maybe two weeks at the most. Um, and then um, George is uh, looking into the data repository suggestion form still. Uh, and he's, um, we are working on figuring out um, a pipeline of uh, what gets curated how. Um, and that's an ongoing process still. We are also still uh, working on the NLP-based indexing. Um, Shaoling has uh, set up the NLP VM. I think she did that last week. Um, so now uh, we're going to work on look, getting uh, the information to Jeff's team. And once Elgin comes back, uh, which is in the beginning of August, we will uh, have a call scheduled. Uh, we will talk about the NLP service as well as the terminology service that can get integrated on the indexing side. Uh, one of the um, features that we said we would provide for uh, version 2 is actually bulk download of indices for people who are interested in it. And uh, Jeff's team is going to look into that. And I as I already said, the tracking system uh, is being worked on in terms of improving the improving the tracking system, and we will have a demo in about two weeks' time. Uh, Reeling is working on expanding the similar data sets that we have. Uh, in Datamax currently. We're also going to, once the refactoring is done, we'll be working on sorting and the uh, additional filters that the user had asked for, um, where they were looking for filters that were available 
based on file type, data restrictions, data level, and population. Um, I'm not too sure. I think file type, uh, we probably might be able to apply that at the level of the not at the level of the data, but at the level of the repository, saying that these repositories provide or have these file formats, if that's what they mean by file type. And as well as data restrictions. But I'm not sure if we will be able to provide all the information that the user is asking for based on the metadata that we are actually getting from the repositories currently. Oh, wait, could you go back one slide there? Uh, yeah, the bottom uh, where it says link to external resources, PubMed. Now, um, are you working with anybody at the National Library of Medicine on this? I don't think so. Oh. Yeah, I think so. That actually comes from the, we assume we are, some of the reports already have the linkage. Yeah. Right. Right so we just use that. So is it uh, the reason the reason I ask is that um, um, internally, uh, you know, obviously it's going to be a, a change in leadership next month at the National Library of Medicine, and and there's always been a feeling in the ads office that uh, we need to somehow work with pub, uh, NLM. Uh, on indexing and indexing issues. Uh, and uh, we, uh, Dunaway, um, Ian, and myself are always looking for ways in which we can um, get them engaged. And, and so my question is, if you think it would be useful to have someone from PubMed engaged in this part of the, uh, the development, let us know, and what we can do is perhaps identify somebody who can uh, work with you. I think right now the problem is that we don't have the linkage between data set and the permit for all the data repository. We only have a couple, maybe one or two. So right, right now we only display those. This is from the, once you have that linkage, that, that database, it's not a problem, just link it from the, uh, provide a link to the related articles. It's well, just, pub, just keep this in the back of your mind. Yeah, yeah. I, I pub just thought uh, even uh, pu uh, PubMed or the NCBI team, they doesn't have this kind of linkage either. But I, we need to be careful here because PubMed has to link to many things. And in order to go in at the right level and to uh, approach NLM, if we need to approach NLM or to work with NLM on this, the first thing to be looking at is their existing APIs for this. So they have this mechanism called link out, um, which is well documented and may well, it depends what we're trying to do here, but I would suggest that we're looking at link out and be fully informed about that and see what it does and what it doesn't do. Um, and that would that would lead to a well-informed conversation with NLM, if, which would earn their respect if we have paid attention to what they provide for doing. Sure. This. Yeah. I think we can check. We yeah. Let's check out the link out. What we yeah. No. I mean, we already now. we already um, we already work with NLM on link out, so we were a link out broker. Yeah. For uh, a number of uh, uh, groups, and so. I and mean, the question is, if we can pull more data from Linkout, um, you know, then what's in the actual repository data, you know, would be one avenue. And the other, the other question is, do we as BioCaddy, you know, provide Linkout information to NLM that would link PubMed to BioCaddy? That would be great, to be honest with you. That would be huge. That would bring so many people to DataMed. Well, once once PubMed unhides the uh, the link out, because that's always sort of buried at the bottom of the page, and I know that in some discussions we've asked them to have like a little data set button higher up on the page, but um, 
because most users don't don't know that link out is there. I thought it just showed up. Yeah, if uh, if uh, Biocaddy links to it, DataMed links to it, it could raise the visibility uh, their end. And as uh, Ian pointed out, uh, we could all learn some points from that. Well, that would be great because it would be great to get data a little more recognition. Uh, should this be an action item? Yeah, I mean we can we can investigate that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not to caveat my remarks. I mean, it's one of these things where I can see a possible connection. I'm not sure, entirely sure about the functionality that's being alluded to here with links to external resources, but it, it certainly seems that link out may have some relevance. And So we already talked about the user studies that are ongoing. We have talked about the video as well. Um, and the other thing is that's being worked on currently is the generation of the benchmark data set. Um, where the annotation is going on, I think we've completed more than half of the queries. Uh, so the remaining should be done pretty hopefully within the next three weeks. Um, and then, again, please deposit the codes in GitHub. Uh, and if there are any other issues that we need to discuss. Uh, the only thing I can point out is, is I, you know, I, I was going through my um, inbox, and I noted that um, uh, International Data Week is actually fast approaching. And so um, for the parts there that this group, the development team, is going to be presenting and or contributing, maybe an upcoming meeting should be devoted to beginning to think about it. Right. So the, I guess just prior to the International Data Week is when where we'll have the Biocaddy All Hands meeting. So once right. we have, once we have the details, uh, we I'll definitely present the details here. Um, we don't have the details yet, but there are plans being made for attending the all hands meeting anyways. And so I guess most of us will be around for site data con too. I'm not too sure how many of us will be there for RDA part of the International Data Week. Um, but the plan is definitely that we'll be around for site data con since we also have a abstract submitted for that. Okay. If there are no other issues, uh, thank you all for calling in and attending the meeting. Thank okay, you. thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.